Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join today's conversation. We really appreciate it. Uh, we still have several students joining the conversation. Our waiting room is still filling up. And so I'll give it a few more minutes before we dive right in. Um, just as a few housekeeping items, um, we would ask that everyone keeps herself on mute as our presenters are speaking. Um, we definitely plan on reserving plenty of time for questions. And so uh, we, we definitely encourage you to save some of those questions towards the end of the content. Um, but again, welcome to today's conversation. My name is William Randall. I'm a campus recruiter here at Mercer. Um, on the call, I have with me several colleagues from our health business, as well as several recruiters um, that support campus recruitment efforts. We have Michaela Seward, and we also have, that covers our recruiting efforts in the central market. Um, and we have Shannon Gaspert that covers recruiting efforts on the West Coast. And again, my name is William and I support campus recruiting efforts in the East Market. And so with that being said, just to kind of give you a little bit of information about what to expect, um, we have colleagues that will talk to us a little bit in more in depth about what our health business is involved in. Um, we also have some individuals that will be sharing some personal stories as it relates to their careers and um, also any career advice that they would like to share. And so with that being said, we'll jump right into the content and I'll pass the call over to Ben. Hi everyone, I'm Ben Hart. I'm an associate at Mercer. Uh, I've been at Mercer for about three years. Prior to that, uh, I went to Temple University where I graduated in 2018 and I studied uh, risk management and insurance there. Uh, at Mercer, I work in our health and benefits practice out of our Philadelphia office. Uh, and today I'll go over on a high level uh, a bit about our health and benefits practice. Um, so I'll do the, jump right in now. So our health and benefits practice is really broken into about three segments of clients that we have. Uh, our largest is employer, uh, then we have associations, and then government and human services. Uh, a large majority of our colleagues work in the employer space, um, so we'll focus on that uh, for a call. Uh, so what do we do in H&B employer segment? Uh, there's a few buckets of things that we do. Uh, the first is employees benefit strategy and then brokerage. Uh, so we help design employee benefits uh, as well as act as a brokerage firm uh, for some of the fully insured benefits that our employers buy. Uh, we also help with voluntary individual and executive benefits. Uh, we do some specialty health and wellness benefits. So this might include pharmacy, total health management, really looking at health holistically to manage conditions such as diabetes, um, and then as well as some lab products, uh, such as life accident, absent, and disability. Uh, we also do international benefits. And then we um, also do benefits in health administration. Uh, we have some platforms. One of the most popular that you might have seen is our Mercer Marketplace 365. And then we also work uh, on U.S. healthcare reform. Uh, we help really keep our employers in the loop of what's going on uh, on a federal level as well as a state level. And then we also have um, some groups within Mercer um, that do work directly uh, with the government um, to kind of help look at what we can do to uh, fix healthcare in the US. Taking a bit of a deeper dive of what our core services are for h and uh, the first is strategic consulting. Uh, here we really look at the program design of, of benefits that are offered uh, to employees but we also act as a day-to-day -day support uh, for our employers. Um, this might be helping them with some of the services that Mercer office, offers, but also helping them manage their vendors um, and really acting as an advocate for our clients. We also help our clients uh, figure out ways to engage and communicate the benefits they offer uh, to their employees. So some of this might be drafting OE communications, which is open enrollment, uh, helping with annual benefit fairs, and um, really thinking about creative ways to let employees know uh, what their employer offers them. Uh, we also do financial analysis. Uh, so if you're a generalist in h and you'll do some light financial work. And we also have uh, a lot of great actuaries within the h and practice uh, that do um, some pretty deep financial analysis uh, for healthcare costs. Uh, we also do benchmarking. Uh, Mercer offers the largest uh, 
survey of employer-sponsored health plans. Uh, so we help kind of aggregate this data and provide it to our clients to really show them what's going on in the industry and really create benefits that help retain employees. Uh, kind of the last bucket is looking at legislative uh, compliance. Uh, so this is helping uh, with some HIPAA reviews. Uh, we give our clients access to ERISA attorneys and making sure um, that some of their legal documents such as the 5500s, uh, we help them prepare. Uh, within h and uh, we work on client teams. So every client team is a little bit different. Uh, if you were to work on a core client team in h and uh, it would typically look like a lead consultant, which would be someone at a partner or principal level um, who would act as the relationship manager and really the, le the lead strategist for our clients. And then you have uh, a senior associate and or an associate who will work as the day-to-day -day project manager and really uh, manage all the projects we might be working on for our clients, whether that be financial work or working on uh, OE communications. And then you'll have uh, an analyst level individual who's really helping taking the first pass at the analytical work and starting to learn how to prepare decks, uh, talk with clients and might start learning how to lead calls. Uh, then we also have some specialty resources that help support our core uh, client teams. And these might be individuals like actuaries who help with our financials, uh, pharmacy consultants who might actually be people who went to school to be pharmacists, who are very familiar um, with pharmaceutical products. Uh, we have individuals who specialize in total health management, uh, which might be looking at uh, what kind of interesting products can we give to help manage claims, um, such this might be um, one product is Livongo for diabetes. Uh, there's some interesting products that these consultants might help look at also for uh, maternity. Uh, we also, since COVID-19, have a COVID-19 task force really looking at the changing legislation and um, trends within COVID to help our clients understand how that might impact their employees and their health plans. Uh, we have compliance, uh, compliance specialists who are typically lawyers. And then we have some uh, health innovation individuals, uh, people who help with global benefits. And then um, we also have some other specialty practices within that. So I'll pause here. I know that was a lot of information and kind of open it up uh, for questions that you might have generally about Mercer and uh, what uh, the h &B practice looks like. If anyone has any questions, feel free to take yourself off mute. We'd love to hear from you. How much? Hi, my name's Albert. Um, how much contact, client contact would a first year analyst see? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I, I think it really varies depending on your client um, and your client teams, but I would say, and uh, any of the other of my Mercer colleagues, uh, feel free to jump in. But I think as an analyst at Mercer, you're given a lot of opportunities uh, to speak with clients. Uh, whether you're sitting in on uh, client calls or if you're starting to practice leading some calls yourself, uh, which might be a little different than some other consulting firms, but I definitely think there's a great opportunity to have that. Hi, I'm Charlie. Uh, on the same kind of analyst kind of side of Mercer, I was wondering if you could go further into the responsibilities a analyst could expect while working with Mercer. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, so again, this will vary depending on your client team and uh, what kind of projects your clients are doing. Uh, but an analyst might take a first uh, stab at putting together financials uh, and learning some base underwriting that would later be, be uh, reviewed by actuaries. Uh, you might take the first pass at reviewing plan documents, which are really detailed documents on how um, different uh, procedures are covered uh, under an insurance plan. Uh, really being a contact point for um, our carriers. Um, so you might be reaching out to insurance carriers to solicit quotes, uh, and, and then also really taking a first stab at any of, any of the analytical work we do for RFPs, uh, which is uh, when we market for medical coverage. Um, so I think as an analyst, you really get to touch a bit of everything, which is pretty fun about Mercer. Hi, uh, my name's Ramon. I wanted to ask, what kind of mentorship opportunities do you guys have for analysts? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, this varies a little bit office to office, 
but generally Mercer has um, a bit of a buddy system. Uh, so when you first start, you might get someone who's been working at Mercer for three, four years, um, who kind of gets to be assigned to be your buddy. And you can ask them any random question you have. Uh, but then what I think is uh, nice about uh, the client team structure in h &B is that within your client teams, you're going to be working with people with a range of experience. As an analyst, you might be working with an associate who has three to maybe five years of experience, uh, a senior associate who probably has about five plus, and then as well as principals and partners who might have 20 plus years of experience. Um, so really within your client teams, you also have a great opportunity um, to really um, get mentorship and training from people who have been at Mercer for a very long time. Thank you. If there's no other questions, I'm happy uh, to start turning it over um, to my colleagues uh, who can jump into the Q&A. Um, I'll let them start by introducing themselves. Uh, Christian, I believe you're up first. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian Mozaleski. Um, I'm a senior analyst here in the Philadelphia office. I grew up in Northeast PA, sort of near Scranton, a small town called Old Forge. Um, I attended Temple University as well as Ben um, in the risk and insurance um, major and began interning with Mercer back in the summer of 2018 and then began my full-time career here as an analyst in February of 2019. Um, I spent most of my spare time listening to music, playing guitar. Um, in the winter, I'm a pretty avid snowboarder. And when I get the chance to travel, I like to spend a lot of times outdoors hiking. As far as career advice, um, in my opinion, it's best to ask questions as early as possible. Um, you know, rather than finding yourself in a position where you might be asking a question that someone may think you should know the answer to. Um, and in my opinion, the best opportunity you'll have to ask any questions is as soon as you start. Hey everyone, um, my name is Lauren Petrella. So I am also a senior health and benefits analyst um, in the same Philadelphia office as Christian. Christian and I actually interned together in the summer of 2018 and he started a like, half semester before me. So I started June of 2019 um, when I graduated from college. I went to Emory University, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm actually from Northwestern Pennsylvania. So right on Lake Erie. Um, I graduated with a double degree in the business school. So I was a finance and operations management major and I did a health innovation concentration. Um, and Mercer just kind of really came to me with um, always having an interest in the health space and being able to work in business as well. Um, when I'm not working or when I'm not exploring the city of Philadelphia, because I love exploring the city. Um, I love playing tennis, running and biking along the river here, um, cooking and baking new recipes and following sports. So I am a Browns fan. Um, so if any of you guys are Browns fans out there, or Phillies fans, I know I'm kind of upset about you know Phillies lately, but that's a little bit about me. Um, for career advice, I say that always be open to exploring you know, new opportunities and personal career development. Um, you know, Mercer's a really large company in the sense that there's so many opportunities for you to explore. Um, so don't ever go into business or any business, you know, blindsided or just kind of straight-minded, always, you know, keep your options open um, and never lose sight of your word. Um, hi, my name is Yuhan and I'm a senior health actual analyst, so a little bit more different I'm on the more specialized side. We handle more of the financial work here in the, and I work out from the SF office where we have more of an actuarial population. So I went to University of California, Santa Barbara, and I majored in actuarial science. And that's how I kind of got into the career and that's how I learned about Mercer. So my hometown's from Fremont, but um, I did, I was born in China. So I moved here, spent half my time here and half the time in China. Um, and some of my hobbies from just being stuck in quarantine is like cooking up French food and having a lot of more picnics. And then I also did badminton from a young age um, also for career advice, it would be like to never be scared to ask for help and opportunity 
people are always like more willing to help than you think. So especially like when you're still in college, always feel free to like cold message people on LinkedIn if you like want to get to know an opportunity or you want to get to know a career better. So I'm sure like if you guys reach out to us afterwards, we're more than happy to like hop on a call with you guys to talk more about Mercer. Hey, I'm Morgan Brandewi. I also went to Emory University along with Lauren. Um, I'm from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Go Tar Heels. Um, I'm an analyst here at Mercer in the Health and Benefits Department. So my hobbies, I would say soccer and traveling um, and a huge quarantine hobby became Catan. And then in terms of career advice, I would just say find a company that aligns with your values. And that's something that'll allow you to become passionate about the work that you're doing and excited to go to work every single day. So don't be afraid to ask during the interview process what a company deems as their values and how they work to exhibit those every single day. And just some background, I did intern at Mercer summer of 2019 and then joined full time in January of this year. Sorry, COVID throws off all of my dates, but happy to answer any questions in terms of the internship or full time. Hi, my name is Leah Fisher. I am also a benefits analyst and I sit in the Charlotte office. Um, I went to Appalachian State University and I graduated last year in the class of 2020. Um, I started, I was supposed to start in June. COVID also threw my dates off. So I ended up starting in September. Um, I'm from the Charlotte area and um, that's currently where I sit. And some hobbies, um, I love reality TV. I love Survivor, so happy it's back on if anybody watches it too. Um, I like eating out, days on the lake, fishing, and um, coffee and volleyball. And then as far as my advice for your career is to advocate for your own career. Nobody is going to know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis besides maybe your supervisor, but even they don't know what you do day-to-day. -day. So um, some advice I got when I first started from a mentor was to keep a running um, like log of what you do day-to-day -day and what kind of projects you sit on. And um, if you like informally mentor somebody, like keep a track of all of that kind of stuff because um, you'll be advocating for somebody when it's time for promotions or salary increases or being put on different projects. Great, thanks everyone for uh, introducing yourself. Uh, so now we're gonna open it up to uh, questions for um, our panelists. Um, so feel free to take yourself off mute, uh, and ask a question, um, or you can also ask one in the chat box and we'll, we'll pick a few from there as well. I have a question. It's not for any specific one here. Um, I'm definitely interested after undergraduate going to seek a graduate degree, preferably in business. So I'm kind of curious about the kind of opportunities Mercer has to help encourage continued like education. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so Mercer does um, offer some tuition assistance um, for degrees like an MBA, if that's something you're interested in. Um, and depending if you're in a specialty practice or not, that degree might vary. Um, but also if you're looking to get any type of like continuing education certifications, um, if you're taking actuarial exams, uh, a popular one on the core side to get is your SEABS. Um, Mercer also offers, um, will pay for those exams, give you some time off to study, um, as well as some uh, salary increases as you get those certifications uh, and any additional degrees. Hi everyone, I had a quick question. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about the differences between an actuarial analyst versus a health and benefits analyst and like the technicalities between the two roles? Um, I think for actuarial, especially in offices that handles more like bigger client that does need actuaries to come in to set rates, we do more of the financial portion. We work very closely with the generous side, but you are doing like uh, the journalists are doing more like project management and they're more in contact with the client, whereas actuaries are like we're more in contact with like the vendors on just like medical dental and vision. So it's more of a specialized help that we just work more in Excel and like setting the financials. Yeah, and I would say just from the non-actuarial side, um, it's just a little bit less quantitative. Um, I guess you can consider it qualitative, although that seems like a stretch. Um, it's definitely number heavy. Um, but I guess less analytical on the math side. 
um, a lot of project management, uh, a lot of reviewing, a um, little more email and words heavy, I guess you could say. Hi, uh, how much should a consulting analyst expect to travel in their first year or actually throughout their career even? I think very limitedly, it depends on your office. Um, here in the SF office, our client are all like very close by. So if you're really traveling, you might be going on site to the client to attend any meetings, but they're all in the Bay Area or in a similar area. So it's not too much traveling. Yeah, I would say in a pre-COVID world, um, it was definitely more than it is now. Um, as like a rough number, I would say I probably was on site of a client, each client maybe three, three, four times a year. Um, definitely ranges, um, but uh, like they were mentioning earlier, um, it's, it's usually within the city. Um, it could be a half day in the office, walk over to it you know, another office and then come back. Um, so I would say it's pretty limited compared to a lot of other, you know, kind of consulting. Oh, cool, okay, thank you. What is an average day like? Do you have like multiple, how many projects do you normally juggle per day or week? Uh, I would say for me, uh, it, it really depends on the time of year. Um, right now, I would say it's, I would say it's maybe quieting down a little bit um, in the summer. Um, a lot of stuff going on. Um, I, to put a number on, I don't know, let's say maybe 10 things kind of going on at once. Um, it's definitely a matter of kind of sending out an email while you're waiting for a response on that, switch up and, you know, work on a different client project. Um, other times of the year, it's a little more um, scheduled. Um, some things we do at the end of the year, say transparency for one, um, you know, that might be one of the only things you're working on that week for a specific client. Um, but it definitely depends on your client load and I would say their renewal cycle. I would also say a helpful way to think about it is rather than projects, we're assigned a client list. So for example, I'm on 11 clients. So those clients I do the work for throughout my time at Mercer. So it's whatever season, like Christian was saying that we're on, say we're working on renewals, you'll be working on renewals for all of your client lists. Um, so it's easier to think about it in terms of how many clients you have and that'll dictate how many projects technically you're on. And I'll add that um, your projects or, or client lists, they will vary in difficulty and size too, and like the amount of time that it will take you to complete it. So um, kind of like Christian was saying, like you'll be working on something and while you're waiting for, you know, questions to be answered by a vendor or um, your client team on it, then you'll like switch over to something else. So some things like right now will take me all week to work on and I'll have a delivery date by like in a day Friday. And some things I know I'll be able to get done by like End of today that were assigned to me today. So it really depends on like how big a specific project is or like an ask or something like that from a client or vendor. Okay, thank you. Um, I have another question. Um, how much of uh, like this is persuasive skills, like um, salesmanship sort of? I would say in an analyst position, it's less sales oriented. Um, definitely more client management um, as you kind of progress in your career up to the you know senior associate principal partner level um, that's that's kind of where it turns a little more salesy from a you know core consulting side of things um, but I would say in our position it's not too really sales oriented I would add that we definitely negotiate on behalf of our clients, though. So in terms of renewals, we're going back to vendors and trying to get the best rates possible. So in a way, your persuasion plays in that regard. Thank you. And, and for that, too, I'll add, um, you will have all the tools that you'll need to negotiate, too, because I know maybe sometimes that word can be a little daunting. So um, like, don't be intimidated by that. Like, 
your teams will give you all the analytics and stuff that you'll need to like go back to a vendor to negotiate. And you too will be working on those analytics too. I have a question. Why would you choose Mercer over another firm per se? Like what are the core company values that you guys are kind of drawn to that makes you want to work here? For me, I would say it's the resources. Um, Mercer being really the size that it is. I mean, we have specialty resources for almost everything. So whether we have, you know, a life and disability specific question, a pharmacy specific question, we have specialists that all could answer that more thoroughly than, you know, any one of us could possibly know. Um, the resources definitely give Mercer a big advantage. In my opinion. And I think for me, it's like the people there. I feel like Mercer trying to hire people who are super open to communication and like the more than happy to work with that kind of people. I think that's like one of the top quality we look for too when we're doing hiring. But I think that really brings like a whole group of people who are just like very much team players. And I think that environment, it's like what I like the most about Mercer. Yeah, and I'll add to that. Um, sorry. Um, no, go ahead. That, um, I, I believe that Mercer is just has a lot of opportunity and coming somewhat coming from someone who was really didn't come from insurance at all. I was more just finance and like health based, but I was able to directly see applications and things that I was interested in and things that I learned in different aspects of my job. I know Ben earlier was talking about like total health management or health innovation. Those being aspects of you know certain things that we present to our clients at Mercer, and I was able to see. The connections in certain classes that I took in college or certain things that I saw in the industry, just depending on whatever I saw in college, you know, it wasn't just like, okay, I'm working in insurance. Okay. There's like, you know, I just look at, you know, health plans all day. There's just so much more that this company has to offer. And I think as someone who's always kind of had interest in a lot of different aspects of business and healthcare, that it was just really, you know, interesting and helpful. And it's also provides opportunities for you to kind of grow and expand your practice. So while you might you know, start as an, an health analyst, you really have the opportunity to grow into to other you know, aspects of the company in the industry. So for me, I kind of have two things. So um, first to speak on people too, I think that we work with really, really intelligent people. Um, I think we're like some of the smartest in the business and every day, like, I feel like I'm having like really intelligent, just high level conversations about benefits and like strategy for our clients. So that's really fun and fulfilling because like, it's just so interesting day to day. Um, and then also, I think, I know this is really cheesy answer and you're probably gonna hear this from a bunch of people, but um, I think our culture is awesome and it depends on office to office, but here in Charlotte, like I think we have such great people and it's super close knit. And um, my supervisor, the OBL of our office really emphasizes like a work-life balance. I think that was put in the chat. Um, so we really prioritize in the Charlotte office, like well-being and um, taking time for ourselves and like taking off when we need to. Um, so I think our culture is great. Anybody else on the panel want to elaborate about work-life balance or maybe what they've seen possibly within this last year in the pandemic, how that's potentially affected things or just your general thoughts on work-life balance? Yeah, I would I say- uh, And go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, um, there was, you know, more of an expectation of overtime. Um, you know, we have a lot of projects that we work on and, you know, especially then, um, you know, it might take more than 40 hours to get it done. Um, since uh, really the pandemic kicked in, um, it's, it's been the expectation that you should only work 40 hours. Um, now, if you kind of find yourself in a position where you have more work than that, I think it's really a conversation with your manager on how to, you know, kind of, how to kind of manage that workflow and see what other kind of resources are available to kind of disperse that. Um, but yeah, the expectation is definitely 40 hours as far as work-life balance goes. And I just want to add in, since I'm an actuary, we do take a lot of study days throughout the year. And then people are typically on your team, they're like are very understanding that like when you're gone, you're gone. You're not expected to log in and check emails. So people are really good about like keeping your work and your life separate. And I'd say too, I don't have much, like I started during COVID, so I don't have, I can't speak on 2019 and before, but um, 
I, I can tell since COVID, the company has tried to really focus on like putting employees well being first. So um, that's nice to see and it's really encouraged. Right now, lots of companies are working remotely. Um, do you foresee um, the company continuing in a remote uh, setting or would it go back to um, needing to be in corporate location? I can, I can add to that. You know, I think Mercer as an organization, we really value the collaborative spirit and teamwork effort. Um, you know, as an organization, we've just recently received some information about encouraging employees to return to the office. Um, you know, as one of the panelists mentioned, the company has done an excellent job in really putting the colleagues well-being first. And for those, you know, that may not be comfortable coming in due to the pandemic and, and such, um, you know, that has been, the business has allowed some flexibility around that. But again, when we kind of look at our core client teams and the collaboration that takes place with our teams and our groups, um, we, we definitely value that in-office activity. Um, but again, there has been a lot of flexibility that has taken place you know, throughout the last 18 months or so. Um, let's address one of the questions in the chat. Um, I know we've got a few panelists on the call that you know were interns. Do you mind sharing with us, you know, a little bit about your experience um, during the interview process? I know a lot of students may have some questions around that. Yeah, so I mean, I can only speak for my experience, and I'm sure it varies kind of office to office. Um, so I first round, I guess, was a career fair on campus for me. Um, from there, I guess, considered um, second round, um, was in office, um, basically got put up in a conference room um, and met with a few, uh, you know, groups of two. Um, I think I met with eight colleagues in total, um, you know, 30 minutes each, uh, maybe two hours, I would say. It was pretty informal. It wasn't, you know, uh, like case study oriented or anything like that. Um, definitely conversational. Um, but I, I would expect that, you know, it kind of varies from office to office. I sit in the Atlanta office and my interview process was the first round was a higher view interview. Um, so one of those online, they ask a question and you have 30 seconds to answer. Um, and then second round, we went into the office and it, like Christian said, it was, I think mine was five colleagues that I talked to for 30 minutes each. Um, the in-person was definitely behavioral. The higher view included one of those estimation questions that you all hear of. That's like, how many basketballs would fit in this room? Um, just seeing how you think, not necessarily that you have to get the right answer, but how would you go about solving the issue? I guess I can speak. My, my experience is a little bit differently, even though I went through the interview process to be an intern in, in 2018, because I went to school in Atlanta and my interview was in Philadelphia. They didn't make me fly up to Philadelphia to be in person. So my entire interview process was virtual. And that was also kind of really before this whole like Zoom, everything being virtual really kind of kicked off, which kind of happened in the next couple of years. But my first round was just me talking one on one um, with the, I guess, the leader of the internship program, who was a senior associate at the time in the office, now principal. Um, we just kind of talked back and forth, and he asked me, I guess, more in depth questions about my background and kind of more personal questions about um, my classes and things like that. Um, and then my final round was, I guess, similar to both Christian and Morgan, but it was all over the phone where. I'm pretty sure they just had different people come in the conference room, groups of two or three individuals asking me different questions. Um, and, and they all just kind of varied. And I thought that was very helpful just because working at Mercer full time, you're working with so many different client teams. It's not like you're working with the same three or four people every single day, day in and day out. So the fact that they had you, you know, meet with maybe a total of nine or 10 different people throughout your interview process just to be an intern, I thought was really 
interesting and really helpful because it was directly applicable to you know what you were doing on the day to day um, working full time at Mercer. So. Talking about those core client teams, you're definitely in a mix of people that are very qualified and you as an early associate are really trying to work that balance of you want to develop and take on responsibility, but also put the client's priorities first and not take on too much to deliver a bad solution to them because it's the client first. So how did you kind of walk that line and approach the seniors who may be more qualified to take on those tougher objectives? I would say at an entry level, um, you know, as soon as you start, there's not this, you know, big expectation that you're just going to hit the ground running and start answering client emails, um, you know, dishing out projects straight to the client. Um, pretty much everything is going to go through peer review um, for, you know, let's, let's call it, uh, a year before you start sending, you know, your emails to the client. Um, once you kind of start taking that, um, you know, you might take the easier ones. Uh, you might still be getting peer reviewed on things, but it's definitely baby steps kind of moving forward. Um, you know, I don't, I don't send every email straight to a client without getting peer reviewed. Um, it definitely depends on, you know, what it is, how content heavy and kind of what kind of statement we're making. Um, you know, definitely if, if you're going to speak on behalf of Mercer, it's definitely best to kind of run it by someone and kind of get a second thought on it. Um, and to add on to that, I think a lot of the senior people are like, they want you to be able to get into that position and to move up in Mercer so that they also like trying to help you get through those different steps so that you get to the position they are. Like what Christian said about like, they're gonna help review your email before you send them out. And then eventually you'll be able to send out emails yourself. And then also like in terms of just like any other analytical work, you're like slowly progressing in Mercer where you're just like doing more and more closer to like what your next step is. And then once you're like working on that next level, that's when they like promote you and then you keep working up. Yeah, it is, um, you know, I'm an associate at Mercer, so I've been here a little longer. Um, so I work with project managing some of the work for analysts um, and new hires. Um, and really it's, it's a combination of looking at what an analyst wants to do, what kind of skills they have and helping them build them. Um, so, you know, you're always gonna have the opportunity if you want to, to voice up that you're interested on working on a project and you're gonna have someone who's, you know, been there a few years longer than you to help peer review things, talk you through how to do it uh, and really make sure you have the tools to be successful. Um, and not let you spin your wheels too long uh, or, or do something inappropriate. So, you know, there's always safety nets for you. How does Mercer invest in its employees? Are there any type of like development or training programs that kind of stick out to you guys? I would say it's definitely um, kind of on you to you know, see what it is you want. Um, Mercer has, like I said, a ton of resources, um, whether that's classes, trainings, um, et cetera. Um, if, if you know what you're looking for, if, if you're willing to ask around for it, there's a good chance Mercer has it. Um, like I said, we have plenty of, um, you know, different programs between, you know, tuition reimbursement, um, you know, studying, study time, um, exams. Um, it's just definitely uh, a matter of uh, knowing what it is and just kind of reaching out to see how it is you can go about, you know, moving forward. And with our buddies that you have assigned they definitely are part of your development. So they'll sit down with you, especially as a new hire and go through what are the different plan designs? What are all the different carriers? Things like along those lines. Um, so in addition to just all the resources that we have, the people are one of your biggest assets. Uh, what you. kind of uh, business kind 
problems can you expect to face as analysts? Like, what are the biggest challenges or and would you expect to find and how would you deal with them? I think like as an analyst, there's not going to be like huge business problem that you'll be facing because there's Mercer's so like they make sure that you always have backup. There's always people who are very senior staff on your client team. So they're usually like very familiar with the client. And generally as an analyst, you won't be tasked with such, um, I guess like big problems. But I feel like as an analyst, what you are struggling every day is like, how do you like learn the tools better? How do you get yourself more involved on the teams? How do you like um, just like move to the next level? I think that's like more like, it's like more of an internal thing that you're working on rather than externally. We do also have strategy meetings with our clients once a year where we go through, we analyze their demographics or things that they wanna focus on in terms of what their company values. And we go through and try to pick out some solutions for them. I think one interesting thing that a lot of us probably touched on this year is with COVID. Recently, they've come out with COVID surcharges on medical premiums. And that's been interesting to work on to see how clients can start to influence behavior to help put an end to this pandemic, hopefully. Would you say most of the projects you work on are local and national, or would you say that you work on global projects as well? I think this might vary depending on your clients. Sorry, Christian, you can go. Uh, no, I was going to say, um, personally, uh, it's definitely more, you know, national, um, U.S. oriented. Um, I would say with the way kind of global insurance works, um, sometimes um, a lot of the things we do don't lend themselves you know, the same way, um, you know, whether it be self-insured or what have you. Um, I, would, I would also say, you know, most of my clients do have, you know, global, a global presence, um, a lot of big companies that are known globally. Um, but the way companies a lot of times kind of handle their benefits and kind of HR um, tends to be a little bit more localized. And so we'll work with a U.S. office um, rather than global. Um, I'd say some of the things we touch on a little bit are, you know, um, you know, expat plans, um, some, some other, you know, if we're talking small populations globally, um, but it's usually not a huge focus. Uh, Mercer is a global firm though. So on some larger clients, like Christian said, you know, as a U.S. employee working in core h and really gonna be focused on the U.S. presence. Um, but for some of our clients, we do um, work with their like international counterparts. So a few of my clients, I'm working with colleagues who um, are in our France office or in Ireland. Um, and so you kind of have an opportunity to see the other services we get to do. But that really depends on if your clients, you know, abroad do purchase Mercer products as well. But there is opportunity to do that. Um, and I think on um, like one of my clients, I like super luckily got to work on a more global project. So they are doing like reimbursement for their entire global population. And so even though like most of the time we are handling only their US population. So there's some my like ad hoc project that you do get to work more with like the global teams. And uh, for this project, I work a lot with the international team and they like help get us the data. And so it's just more ad hoc. Great questions. Um, I see one here in the chat I don't think we, we've covered. Um, what are the most rewarding and challenging parts about working in health and benefits? Um, I think the most challenging is probably communication. Um, you're working with so many different people um, on the employer side, so your clients and internally, so your colleagues and externally with the vendors. Um, so I think if you're good at communication, that's definitely a plus. Um, so that's probably 
for me at least personally, the most challenging part. Um, and that also goes hand in hand with project management. So just like keeping up with your projects and where they are on any given day um, and their status and making sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Um, and then rewarding, I think personally, um, what we do, we can see directly affects our clients and their employees. Um, and again, like we've been saying, like it depends on your bag of clients. So I have probably about 50-50 small and large group um, so my smaller group clients, I can really see the, the effect. So um, they tell us like their employees that have come to them directly saying that they loved a certain benefit or um, they loved a certain communication material we did for their open enrollment, et cetera. The larger ones are a little bit more quiet on the employee internal side. But um, for me personally, I think it's cool to see it directly pay off what, what we do, especially as analysts, because sometimes it feels like you're in the background doing, doing the work. So I think that's cool. I definitely agree if to both of those parts, um, how rewarding it is. I think rewarding from a client standpoint, definitely everything that we have said, but from a personal development standpoint, I think it's really rewarding how, like, because you have so many different clients, you're doing different things, you know, as the years progress, like, being able to see yourself, okay, originally maybe you were just working on one thing for one slide, or maybe you were just working with the census to now, you know, like a year or two later, a person like myself being able to lead, you know, client meetings, being the person that's actually, you know, answering questions and, you know, being able to actually take in the information. Like when I first started, I felt like I didn't really know benefits, really know what I was doing, but through that reputation, that through that repetition, through that asking questions, you know, that personal development work that you do when it comes to developing yourself in this job. I think it's really kind of cool personally to see that pay off and you kind of see, you know, the direct work that you're doing pay off to your clients. And a lot of the clients that we work with are really, really, really appreciative of the work that we do, especially this past year with COVID and everything going on. And it's, that's really rewarding to see on the day to day, um, just to see that huge impact, not, in, not only with yourself, but on your clients as well. So. Yeah, and for me, I think, um, well, one of the biggest challenges, I would say, is definitely the kind of changing landscape um, of insurance and all the, all the different legislation that gets passed, um, you know, seemingly every day. Um, but one of the most rewarding things, I think, is, you know, kind of being in the same room talking with, you know, these senior level people at, at your clients, um, and they're asking you questions. And, you know, you actually know the answer. Um, you know, you're kind of in this uh, niche position where you are the, the benefits specialist. Um, so, you know, you'll find yourself in situations where you're talking with like, you know, C-suite level people at your clients. Um, and, you know, you're, you're kind of engaging in a back and forth conversation. Um, and it's a little bit of a different position than I think you would find yourself in in a lot of other industries. Um, reflecting back, uh, is there a skill that you think you didn't have when going into it that uh, you like that I could learn prior to coming in and, you know, for foreseeable? Um, yeah, I, I think. Um, any kind of like data analytics would definitely. What be information helpful. do you wish you received prior to coming? I think you were cut out slightly in the end. Can you repeat your question? Um, what information do you wish you had prior to coming into Mercer? Um, I think like going off your entire question, like one of the skill set that I think I learned a lot, or like it definitely grew exponentially here at Mercer, it's multitasking and organization skill, because there's just so many emails coming in, you're on so many different clients, so many different projects. So during your day, you're very much switching on and off from calls, on and off from different Excel um, PowerPoints or deck. You're just like going off on a lot of different things. So it's being able to like know, keep track of everything going on throughout your week and like getting, making sure you meet all the deadlines. So that really require a lot of like organization skills on like your emails or like your work progress. 
and be able to like work with the team so that they can know that what you're doing. So I wish those were the two things that I like wish I learned more in college, but they're like definitely not like a class on this kind of stuff. So it's more like, I think you do also just learn as you go. I think a technical thing that if you're like really looking for something to focus on while you're still in school, um, it sounds cheesy, but Excel. Um, I think that's something we all use every single day. And the better you get at it, the easier when you are to start, you can kind of focus on learning some of the more technical terms and strategic items. Um, and then you're really familiar with the tool, uh, like more second nature um, that way. So it, it sounds like something every firm will tell you, but we do spend a lot of the time in Excel. Okay. Another question about that. Sorry. Um, do you use any other statistical statistical software besides Excel? Like, do you go into R Studio at all, or Python, or anything, or is the primary the are you guys primarily using Excel? Um, I I know on the core side, um, our actuaries will build their own macros within Excel, and we kind of have some of our internal underwriting programs in there. Um, I don't know on the actuarial side if you guys use any additional tools. Um, uh, we mostly also work in Excel. So like what Ben said is mostly like macro, but in our office, we're like, we know a lot of people nowadays are like having that coding experience and we definitely want them to bring that technology in. So there are people in our office who are like working in R or working in Python. It's smaller projects, but we're like trying to get it started. Do you expect the company to shift it all to using more advanced software like Python or R? Or do you think Excel generally does most of what you need? As Excel is definitely all you need. Um, if you do, if you're interested in like Python or R or like any other thing, I think Mercer is more than happy to support you as a resource. But um, it's more of a voluntary thing than like a you have to have the skill. And I think part of the benefit of Excel is kind of how ubiquitous, ubiquitous it is with all of your clients, um, whether it be clients, carriers, it's, it's really easy to send Excel files and know that everyone's, you know, computers are going to work and kind of can read those files clearly. Um, I think when you start talking about some of the other programs, um, you're kind of taking a gamble that, you know, the person you're sending it to also has the program and also knows how to use it. Um, and I just feel like we're not quite there right now. Yeah, I do have a question. So um, regarding um, cybersecurity, as uh, since I do uh, cybersecurity currently at another company, I was thinking about how has Mosu handled incorporating cybersecurity and especially blockchain, cryptocurrency, and taking over the market? How have they handled them uh, into um, developing their training as the, those technologies change the landscape? So, I mean, I can't speak to blockchain or anything of that too much, but as far as data security, um, we have a bunch of internal protocols as far as, you know, data encryption, um, kind of what kind of content we're sending out, um, you know, by nature of our business, we do deal with, you know, PHI um, and, you know, sensitive information. Um, so there's definitely a big focus to make sure that we keep all of the, you know, appropriate, appropriate data security measures um, from that end. Yeah, and also I uh, also the follow-up question. So I know um consulting is a big part of cybersecurity. So um if most of it has a uh, cybersecurity consulting, how have they um incorporated how have they um um incorporated curriculum that would train your cybersecurity consultants to keep up with the changing demands of the market? Yeah, so um Mercer, you know, specifically will at least the people on this call focus on the health and benefits. Um, one of our sister companies, uh, which is Arsh. Um, they do a lot of the more like PNC insurance and cybersecurity um, on that end. But um, so we, you know, as a company of, as Marshall McLennan, we do have access to those kind of things and experts mm. that we can tap into. Um, but I, I would say it's more something that um, one of our operating companies, uh, Marsh, would deal with on a day to day basis. Sounds good. Great questions. Uh, we definitely love the engagement. Uh, we are, it looks like we're getting close to the end of the hour. Um, do we have any last minute questions? I believe we got through most of the questions in the chat. Any last minute questions or comments that any of the students have for us?
And again, um, I have provided my contact information in the chat. Uh, Shannon is a is our West Coast recruiter. She did also provide her information. So, you know, in the event you have you know, additional questions after this conversation, uh, we'll definitely provide some insight in as to providing those answers. Uh, there's Michaela Seward's contact information. She supports recruiting efforts in the central market. And so kind of depending on where, you know, you're looking to identify opportunities, uh, just make sure you reach out to the appropriate recruiting resource. Um, so I, I have a question. So how, um, how open is the company to people that get the job done, but in their own creative way versus those that must have it done in a certain like procedure? What is it? Kind of a process question, I think, Ben. Yeah, so I mean, I think that's gonna probably vary on your project, right? Like if you're underwriting, there are some standard things you have to do and look at and, um, you know, that's a little more standardized. But if you're looking at a big strategy project or a way that you want to manage something, you know, you're kind of, once you get to a certain level, given, you know, more free reins to kind of approach how you want to solve a strategic problem or what vendors you might want to contact. So I think it's a combination, right? Like it's never, you know, black and white that you can do everything out of the box. Um, but it's also never that you, you know, just always have to follow the formula. So I, I think it's a combo. And I think like you are given some opportunities to immerse you when you're building a new project to be innovated. And it's like from your local team, like you're get to decide how you want to build it so that you do have like room for innovation for sure. Thanks, that's important because I'm real innovative, so. <laughs> Is the program for only um, students graduating on fall of 2021? No, the, 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 ahead. Ahead. Oh, sorry. the positions are um, open to fall 2021, spring 2022 for full-time or um, fall 2022, spring 2023 for interns. Who would I contact being that I'm in Illinois? Is that the West Coast or East Coast? Illinois is Central, Midwest. Well, okay. Um, who's the Midwest then? Turn Mi Michaela. Michaela. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It looks like we're um, at the hour. And so again, uh, we greatly appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with us this afternoon. Um, very thoughtful questions, and uh, we definitely love the engagement. Again, if you want to check out the chat, if you're looking for opportunities in the central market, uh, you can send that to Michaela. If you're looking for opportunities on the East Coast, you can send that directly to myself. Um, and then we have Shannon Gaspert that also provided her contact information for opportunities on the West Coast. And so we definitely look forward to hearing from you. Um, and we will, we are currently reviewing applications for considerations. Um, and uh, we hope to uh, have additional conversations with you moving forward. One real that, quick, a couple questions to address. Um, most of our application deadlines are this Sunday. So please try and get your application in as soon as possible. Um, most of you, I'm pretty sure are on Handshake, which is how you found out about this event. So our positions are posted there directing you to the website. Um, the posting on our website to apply. Also, um, you do have to be a fully matriculated student, um, meaning you have to be in school currently in order to apply for any college program 2022 positions. Um, if you graduated prior to, um, well, this year, then um, you'll have to look for positions on the uh, MMC or careers.mmc.com website that do not say college program 2022 to be eligible. There are also still some 
um, entry level roles, like similar analyst type roles for those who are just, you know, more recently out of college. Um, there are a couple positions for January grads posted and they would specifically say, or for December grads posted, they would specifically say January 2022 in the description. Those, um, we would be a little bit more lenient in some cases for May 2021 grads to be considered, um, but typically all of our positions, you do have to be a fully matriculated student. So I think those were the a couple of the recruiting type questions that were left in the chat. So like William said, we look forward to uh, seeing your applications and feel free to reach out to any of us with questions. Thank you, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.